Welcome, this is John Epps. I'm with the Texas A&M Transportation Institute at Texas A&M University. And I'm Dennis Berryhill. I'm the statewide seal coat coordinator for Texas and I work for the maintenance division. Today we're gonna to provide a summary on this video of, of seal coat brief 20-14, which is titled Calculating Asphalt Shot Length. And the asphalt shot length is an integral part of the various kinds of quality control, quality assurance processes that are used in the field. The brief itself can be found on one of these two websites. You'll notice the top website is for TxDOT employees only. It's within the maintenance division at TxDOT. And then the Texas Asphalt Pavement Association has and monitors the texasasphalt.org website. And this brief can also be located there. In addition to the brief is a PowerPoint that's associated with the brief. You will also find this video at these websites and you'll find the slides that we're using today for that particular briefing summary. I'll talk very briefly and introduce the subject today before Dennis will take over and, and complete the program. Shot lengths, as I mentioned before, are a very important part of maintaining quality control on a seal coat project. You must first establish the shot rate prior to calculating the uh, shot itself, the shot length itself. We need to verify the shot rate and we can do that by knowing the shot length and determining where the distributor stops or starts relative to that shot length. We can determine the quantity of asphalt delivered to the roadway by also using the information derived from the shot length and the shot length that's, that was actually put on the roadway. There's a couple definitions that are contained uh, in the specification. One is for rock lands, the other one's for asphalt shot. A shot is the area covered by one distributor load of asphalt material. The rock land is the area covered at the aggregate rate directed by the engineer with one truck load of aggregate. The asphalt shot length should be an even multiple of rock lands. This is a pictorial of that. You see the rock land is one fourth of the total asphalt shot length. So again, we tie the asphalt shot length to the rock land and that will be explained in a four step process very shortly. Item 316 of the specific specification book, section 4.7.2, we need to verify the distributor has enough asphalt to complete the entire shot. We wanna make sure that the shot length is, is laid out before applying the asphalt liner. So each shot needs to be laid out in the field. And this is a way of controlling shot quantities. And we wanna mark the rock lands themselves too to make sure that the rock is there and available to cover up the asphalt. And we can verify the area rate when we're directed to by the engineer as well. Next, we'll talk about a four-step process that we can use to calculate the length of the shot. Dennis will talk about these. Thank you, Dr. Epps. As Dr. Epps mentioned, we're gonna use a four-step process uh, in determining the length of our asphalt shot. Uh, the first step, is shot length is, is based on the distributor tank volume. And what we're trying to say here is we want to make sure that that distributor holds enough asphalt that we can cover the entire shot without blowing out or without running out of asphalt. Uh, step two is we need to calculate the length of a rock land. We need to know this uh, because it will be a multiple of even rock lands. Step three is to adjust the shot length to a multiple of the, of the rock lands. So we're going to use step one, step two, and we're going to get a, a even rock land in step three. And then step four, we're going to check and make sure that we have enough remaining asphalt in the distributor tank that we don't blow out uh, before we reach the end of the shot. So we're going to get a little more involved in this. And the first thing, we're going to talk about step one is shot length based on the distributor tank volume. And this is how we're going to do that. We're going to take the volume of the tank in gallons and we're going to divide that by the shot rate of gallons per square yards and this is going to give us a shot area in square yards. You take the shot area in square yards and multiply it times nine to get it back into square feet and then you're going to divide that by the width of the shot, and that's going to give you a length. And here's an example of that. We're given the volume of the tank or the distributor, 
which is 4,000 gallons. Remember, this is probably a maximum of 4,000 gallon tank. The shot rate has been determined that we want to try to apply 35 hundredths of a gallon per square yard. And the width of the lane or the shot that we're going to make is 12 foot, 12 foot wide. So we take 4,000 gallons, we're going to divide that by our shot rate of 0.35. That's going to give us 11,429 square yards of a shot area. So we take the 11,429 square yards, we multiply it times nine to get it back into square feet, divide that by 12 foot wide, because that, that's the width of our shot, that gives us 8,571 foot. Now this is not going to be our actual shot length. This is the maximum length that that distributor can, can cover up with 4,000 gallons. This is an alternate method. It's the same, or same uh, you're going to get the same results, but the calculation is just shown in a little different way. This one in particular shows the volume of the tank in gallons times nine divided by the shot rate times the width of the shot, and it still gives you the same shot length. And here's, here's the calculations. We're given the same information as we did previously, just the, the uh, formula is a little bit different. The shot length equals 4,000 times nine divided by 0.35 times 12 still gives you the same length of 8,571 feet. Step two, length of a rock land. So like we said before, it's gonna be a multiple uh, uh, of our rock lands, so we need to be able to calculate this. So we're gonna take the volume of the truck in cubic yards, we're gonna multiply that times our spread rate of aggregate, square yards per cubic yard, and we're gonna multiply that times nine. We're going to divide that by the width of the aggregate spread uh, in, in feet. So here's the information that we're given. Our dump truck volume is 12 cubic yards. That's how many cubic yards are on the dump truck. Our spread rate has been identified as 1 to 140. One cubic yard will cover up 140 square yards. The width of the spread is going to be 12 foot wide. So we take the length of our, or the length of our rock land per truck is equal to 12 foot wide, I mean 12 cubic yards, I apologize, multiplied times 140 times nine divided by the width of 12 equals 1,260 feet. This is the length of one rock land. So now we're going to adjust our asphalt shot. And we're gonna make sure it's a multiple of even rock lands. So to determine the number of trucks needed, we're going to take the length of our asphalt shot determined in step one, and we're going to divide that by the length of our rock land. The number of trucks. We were given the length of the asphalt shot or the maximum that that distributor could cover was 8,571 feet. The length of our rock land of one truck was 1,260. So we're going to divide 8,571 by 1,260. That gives us 6.8 trucks. We're not going to use a fraction of a truck. We're going to make sure it's an even multiple so we go down to six, and that's how many trucks we're going to use. The adjusted shot length will be the number of trucks times the length of the rock land. So what we're given, we're given the number of trucks we determined was six. We also determined that the length of one rock land was 1,260 feet. So we multiply six times 1,260, and that gives us an overall shot length of 7,560 feet. So step four is remaining asphalt in the distributor tank. We're going to do to determine the amount of asphalt shot with the adjusted shot length. So the length of the shot in feet times the width of the, the shot in feet times the shot rate, which is gallons per square yard, divided by nine. This is what we're given. We're given the width of 12 foot, length of 7,560, shot rate 
of 0.35. So the asphalt shot with adjusted shot length is 7,560 times 12 times 0.35 divided by 9. The shot should take 3,528 gallons. So what we're going to do is make sure that we have enough asphalt left on the distributor so it will not blow out. So we take the tank capacity minus the asphalt binder shot that we calculated, which we start with a tank capacity of 4,000 gallons minus the 3,528 gallons required to make the shot, and what we're left with is 472 gallons. General rule of thumb is you want to have at least 100 gallons left in a distributor at 2,000 gallon capacity. For 4,000 uh, 4, gallon capacity, you want at least 200 gallons left over. We had over 400 left over, so we should be in good shape and we shouldn't end up with, a, the, uh, with what, the situation that we have in the picture shown above. So we'd like to summarize what we've learned today. First off, plans and specifications. This is where you're going to start and you're going to find your, your starting point for your asphalt rates and your rock rates. Then you're going to take through laboratory design and test methods uh, with your aggregates, you're going to have an adjusted uh, asphalt rate and an adjusted rock rate. Then once you get in the field, through field conditions, you're going to adjust these even further. Uh, as we discussed, we have a four-step process to mark these uh, asphalt shots. It's based on distributor capacity, rock lands, and a, correct, a correction for a number of trucks, and then we check for residual asphalt. I would like to thank you for watching this video today. Hopefully we give you some tools to help you improve the quality of the seal coat program in your district. Again, thank you, and please be safe.